Good afternoon. My name is Paul Lowenthal. I'm the Assistant Fire Marshal with the Santa Rosa Fire Department. I'm also I had the unique opportunity of being the Debris Task Force Leader for the City of Santa Rosa for the last seven months. Um, as a member of the Fire Department and as an employee of the City of Santa Rosa, it's quite a monumental moment to be here seven months later, and there's a lot of good work that's been done. Uh, behind me are the speakers. Uh, you have on your uh, press packets the lists and names of the speakers. We'll go through each one of them individually. Uh, following the final speaker, I'll come back up and we'll open up the question and answers period. Um, without any further um, delays, we'll get started. Good morning, everybody. I'm Chris Corsi, the mayor of Santa Rosa. And um, we're here today to, to mark a milestone, which is uh, the um, close to being complete with, on a debris cleanup of this disaster that uh, came upon Santa Rosa and Sonoma County uh, seven months and one day ago. The debris cleanup has been unprecedented uh, in the history of California. More than two, two, billion, two million tons of debris has been carted away from the aftermath of the fire. If my math is correct, that's four billion pounds of debris. Uh, there, there are lots of numbers to think about here. But as we talk about and think about the numbers, I, I urge us all to remember that this isn't just about numbers. It's not just about debris. This represents people's lives and people's memories. Uh, a lot of people lost everything they had uh, on the night of October 8th. More than 40 people lost their lives that night. These numbers also indicate an import, important milestone, that we are fully into recovery mode at this point. In Santa Rosa, we have 117 homes under construction, rebuilds of, of homes burned by the fires. We have 85 more that have their permits, and 163 that are in the process of getting their permits. These numbers represent less than 10% of the 3,000 homes that were lost in Santa Rosa. So we're in the beginning, but we are solidly in the beginning of, of recovery. And each new permit represents hope and faith on the part of the people who are rebuilding. And I hope it gives hope and faith to others who are in, in that process. I want to thank our partners who are here today folks from Sonoma County, California Office of Emergency Services, FEMA, the Army Corps of Engineers, the United States Environmental Protection Agency. I also want to thank all of the contractors who've worked so hard on this effort and all of our residents, both those who have, have lost their homes and those who haven't, who have um, been with us in supporting this effort for the last seven months. This job is not fully complete. No job this big with this many moving parts is gonna be perfect and without problems. We know that there are issues out there with some, some um, residents who have not had their property cleaned as, as uh, they had expected. And we're, we know that we're not going to be able to make everyone happy what we want to do is get as close to that perfection as we, can, as we possibly can. And that's the pledge that I will give today from myself and the organization that, that I represent, the City of Santa Rosa, that we're going to work as hard as we can till we get as close to perfection as we can on this debris cleanup. With that, I'll introduce Supervisor Shirley Zane of the, of the County of Sonoma. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I am Shirley Zane. I represent the third district on the Board of Supervisors, and last year I was the chair of the board during the fires. You know, I want to start off by saying that disasters um, begin and end at the local level. Um, we've been here all along with our residents, and we're going to continue to be there with them. There's a, still a very long road ahead. We want to celebrate what we've been able to achieve, but we also want to assure the people that we serve 
that we will continue to advocate for them, that we will be there for them. We had a town hall meeting the other night with the county and the city, and we had about 160 residents who showed up. And they, um, out of listening to all the speakers, um, when we got to the therapist who talked about uh, the crisis counseling program that we were rolling out at the county, a $3 million FEMA-funded program that will be um, funded through December, a lot of the people resonated with that the most because the therapist said, are you drinking water? Are you eating? Are you sleeping? And most importantly, are you getting the support you need? Are you talking to your neighbors? She stressed the importance of not being isolated. And so when we come here together to do uh, um, basically a press conference, we're also talking about standing shoulder to shoulder with all of our different resources. And on behalf of the County of Sonoma, I wanna, I wanna thank the City of Santa Rosa, I wanna thank Cal OES, I wanna thank the US Army Corps of Engineers and their contractors, our incredible representatives back in Washington, Congressman Huffman and Congressman Thompson, who are working tirelessly to bring us back the millions, billions of dollars we need to rebuild our community. We do have a long road ahead of us, but we have completed major, major advances in the debris removal. Sonoma County has worked tirelessly to reach, reach this goal. We've had over 40 community meetings in four weeks following the fires. And we continued with our partners. We hosted a right of entry processing center. I would be remiss not to mention our environmental health staff that, pro that processed literally over 3,000 applications for the government-run debris program. The county also participated in a joint debris task force, with, which has been instrumental in determining the process of debris removal. It's been a complex process. There have been a lot of players, but we've come together and we aren't done yet. That's the main thing. We aren't done yet. Everybody that stands uh, here before you today has massive empathy over what our residents are experiencing. Not just now, not seven months ago, but what they will be experiencing for the next seven years. We embrace them, we are here for them, and I promise you, we can't do enough for them. So even though we're talking about debris removal, it is, as the mayor said, about rebuilding people's lives. We've given many of them a clean slate in terms of those properties and those foundations upon which they can build. And not only build new structures of which will house them and their families, but rebuild memories the type of memories that we all need as we move forward as a community. Thank you very much, and I'd like to introduce now the incredible director of the Operations of Emergency Services for the Governor, Director Mark Ghirladucci, and we can't thank him enough for all he's done. Thank you, Supervisor Zane, and uh, good morning. I'm Mark Ghirladucci. Governor Brown's Director of Emergency Services. I think I want to start off by saying that from the beginning of this very catastrophic, very devastating event, the response has been a one team, one fight effort. That's local, state, federal, private sector, the business community, and mostly the community, the citizens of all the counties that have been impacted by the fire coming together in the response to this event. And that's carried through through the recovery, a whole of community approach through the response and into the recovery. And we're continuing to work that today. This is a marathon, not a sprint. But you all may remember just roughly seven months ago uh, in uh, town hall meetings where I stated that we were going to aggressively pursue uh, a debris cleanup operation and what was uh, uh, the largest debris operation since the 1906 earthquake 
that California has had to deal with and really one of the most complicated debris operations that we've seen in our country. And the um, challenge was getting it done very, very fast uh, uh, in, in a time frame that we could accelerate the recovery process to move forward. That took a tremendous amount of coordination and we could not have done that alone. This had to be a, a whole of community approach. I can't say enough about the local governments, our federal partners, the state agencies, and the citizens who endured trucks and heavy equipment and noise uh, and, and a disruption uh, in, the, in, the, in the time frame that, that they were dealing with the outcomes of the disaster. We are now close to 99% complete of major operations. But we know that there are still uh, uh, properties that need to be addressed. There's a handful of properties. We're not going anywhere. We'll continue to work those properties, those, those sites, uh, and we'll continue to stay engaged uh, until it's done in an appropriate manner. And we'll take into account all of the, the issues that are applicable uh, that we can address uh, with our partners at the federal government to make sure that it's done in the best way possible. This is a tremendous effort. And um, uh, moving forward, after the debris has been cleaned up, we're gonna still continue to remain here through the process of helping our communities rebuild making sure that every federal dollar that's available, making sure that state programs and dollars that are available, making sure that we leverage non-governmental organizations and community-based organizations to come together to ensure that our communities get rebuilt to the fullest. This is very important that you know this because this is a one team, one fight effort and will continue to be as we move forward. I can't say enough about uh, the city of Santa Rosa, San Sonoma County, Mendocino County, Lake County, Napa County, and all the communities that we work with through this process. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to meet the metric, uh, uh, at least 99% of getting the debris cleaned up uh, in early 2018. So with that now, I'm gonna turn it over to my partner, um, a great partner, uh, Federal Coordinating Officer Bill Roach from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. FEMA has been uh, um, uh, at the hip with us right from the get-go, and uh, I can't thank them enough for their uh, continued support to all of us here uh, in, this, in this disaster. So, Bill Roach. Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you, Mark. Uh, uh, my name is Bill Roach. I'm the Federal Coordinating Officer on this event uh, out of uh, Region 9. Our officers are in Oakland. Um, uh, I want to reiterate some of the points that uh, my partner at the state said. For one, we have an incredible, really an incredible working relationship with the state of California. Uh, that has benefited us at all levels. Uh, and without that, uh, we wouldn't be uh, getting done what we've gotten done thus far. And there's so, so much more left to do. To Mark's point, uh, the federal government's here to help coordinate uh, solutions, recovery solutions, at the uh, state and local level. I can't say enough about the local level and the relationships that we've built, both at the state and federal level with the locals to get solutions. Early on, uh, you know, task forces were set up at the local level for both debris and housing that gave us ideas at the federal and state level so we could come to some solutions on, on housing folks that had been devastated and didn't have places to go, both uh, through the early on uh, process of, of uh, housing and then the interim housing piece, and then ultimately to getting them to, to rebuild or, 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 or do whatever they choose to do in the recovery. We know uh, emphatically that people are still hurting. We're hurting right along with you. Uh, I've got staff in my own Oakland office that, that are, were directly impacted because they live in this area as well. So this is, uh, to Mark's point, uh, one team, one fight. It all started with debris. It doesn't end with debris. 
I think we've done a tremendous job collectively to get ourselves to this point. Still got work to do. We all know that, and we're not going away, uh, both on the debris issues nor on the uh, long, longer term recovery uh, uh, impacts that we have to address, whether that be uh, housing or, or any of the other things. The, the, uh, the debris mission uh, was a very complex and difficult uh, mission to take on. 2.2 billion tons of debris, hazardous debris, that have been removed. And um, with, uh, with the help of US EPA, Cal Recycle, USACE, and, and all the other state agencies and federal agencies, uh, I think uh, we've done, uh, gotten us to a, a very good point now uh, so we can start focusing on uh, helping in, in other areas. Um, I, I would like to just say that on the uh, be remiss, SBA also provided over 1,200 loans uh, for the, uh, somewhere in the amount of $155 million to help survivors uh, make decisions to rebuild. So still, uh, finally, I want to thank everybody uh, behind me, all the agencies uh, involved, others that, that aren't here, and of course, uh, all the way down to the local level. Uh, now I want to hand it off to uh, Colonel Eric McFadden, uh, the commander of the Southern Pacific Division uh, for the Corps of Engineers that has been uh, a monumental partner here with us in, uh, in, in driving and, and managing the debris operations. So thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, it's my honor to be speaking here in front of you, uh, provide you an update and wrapping up this very important work. And it's just to reiterate the fact that you've heard throughout the morning, we're not done yet. First, I do want to echo on behalf of our entire U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, heartfelt sympathy for the victims and survivors of the October wildfires. Since the onset of the mission, I've personally visited many of the impact areas and spoken with, with those who lost so much in this fire ravaged region. And I cannot fathom the impact this natural disaster had on victims and families. But I can assure you that our team here today are very proud to play an important part with the recovery effort and the reconstruction effort that's currently ongoing. Our role here has been one of support, supporting our local, state, and federal partners, removing eligible fire debris so the people living here can begin the task of rebuilding their homes and communities. As the lead agency for the Emergency Support Function 3, FEMA called upon the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in October to execute a massive debris removal operation. This program in partnership with the California Governor Office of Emergency Services, and we've been working tireless, tirelessly ever since to accomplish this mission as quickly as safely as possible while taking great care to minimize the environmental concerns in dealing with the contaminated material and show our deepest respect for the property owners throughout the process. Like many of our soldiers and civilian employees, I've been deployed around the world. What makes this deployment for our team so important is that the mission that we've had, distinct privilege of deploying to help the people living here in Northern California. And in fact, many of our personnel that work in San Francisco area and Sacramento area are from this area and some did lose their houses. And it was their honor to be part of the mission and it's our honor to be part of the community that helped rebuild this. To date, we've had more than 850 volunteers from across the Army Corps of Engineers deployed to this region, and many of these people have been away from their families and friends for several months. And I assure you, they wouldn't be here if they didn't care deeply about this effort that's ongoing. This mission truly took a unity of effort, working together to tackle the largest debris removal mission in California since 1906. The success of this joint endeavor is evident as we continue to see restoration efforts underway. To highlight some of that, we are 99% complete as of today, having removed 2.2 million tons of debris, which equates to nearly 314 square miles of fire area that's been cleared. 4,272 of the parcels have been cleared, tested, and we've notified the county that they are ready for rebuilding. However, I do want to reiterate, there's still work to be done, and there's still work that's ongoing including closing out issues and concerns that have been raised by property owners through our debris removal information line and the financial administrative actions necessary to provide parcel completion reports for every property to FEMA and to close out the contracts. I do want to conclude this by saying I've been in the Army for a long time 
And I don't recall the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers ever being tasked with a debris removal mission of this size and scope. For the Corps and our partners, some of the efforts we undertook to complete these complex tasks, we were truly in uncharted waters. And we're innovating as we go, in some cases on a daily basis, to figure out the right solution for the right problem at the right time to rapidly reconstruct and move on to assist the survivors moving forward. I assure you that our team here today and our team that's been here on this entire mission truly takes great pride in having the opportunity to have served the people in Northern California as they recover from such an enormous widespread disaster. And in closing, I want to reiterate, it truly takes a community to rebuild a community. And we're honored to have been part of this community. I want to thank everyone here and everyone within these communities for allowing us to do that. It's my pleasure now to introduce uh, the Director of uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Enrique Manzanilla from Region 9 Superfund Division. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my, again, my name is Enrique Manzanilla. I'm the Director of the Superfund Division at the U.S. Environmental Pre Protection Agency at our office in San Francisco. It's, uh, I really appreciate the invitation to be here with you today. You know, at the height of this response, EPA was able to gather almost 300 EPA staff and contractors to respond and to work with all our partners here gathered here today. Um, two, two individuals are here with me that were part of that group, uh, Michelle Wittrick from our press office, who I think many of you got to know during the course of this response, and Steve Kalinog, who was my incident commander uh, during basically 80 percent of the time frame of our involvement in this, uh, in this major, major response for us. Um, you know, we, um, we got boots on the ground in mid-October, mid and we began the, the process of removing household hazardous waste uh, from focus first on Napa and Sonoma counties and then expanded to Lake and Mendocino counties. Um, we surveyed thousands of burden parcels to locate and ensure the safe removal and disposal of household hazardous waste, paint solvents, pesticides, propane tanks, other types of hazardous materials. Uh, we completed 95 percent of our assigned mission within the first month of being on the ground. Um, after that first month, uh, we began to work to uh, assess and remove asbestos from burned buildings in those four counties. And uh, this, uh, this assessment, excavation, disposal work was just completed last month. So in terms of numbers, we collected household hazardous waste from over 6,500 parcels. And we collected asbestos-containing material from over 700 parcels. In total, we collected uh, over 2,600 tons of household hazardous waste and almost 25,000 cubic yards of asbestos-containing material. You know, we've done this in, um, in other wildfires in prior years, but the scale of this was unprecedented for us as an agency. And of course, we wouldn't have been able to, uh, to do the work we've done without a tremendous effort on, on the part of many individuals at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, not just folks at U.S. EPA's office in Region 9. You should know that there, there were people here from our Denver office, our Seattle office, our, our Dallas office, uh, many individuals. And, but of course, the collaboration of all the people gathered here today and others uh, like our friends at our, and colleagues at Cal, at Cal EPA. Uh, and at, lastly, I just want to, like others have done, to acknowledge uh, the residents of, the, of these communities. Uh, you know, we did a lot of good work. The work still continues, obviously. And uh, I want to acknowledge that these residents suffered a tremendous de de devastating loss. But I have, and my colleagues at EPA, have a high degree of respect for the res their resilience. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our uh, speakers, and we'd now like to open it for a question and answer period. So um, how far you can be 100 percent that where there would have been, if that's the case, why would we stop this today instead of waiting until it's completely removed? 
Today's conference is really an update to provide you uh, an understanding of kind of where we're at. And really today w w is a, a description that major operations are complete. Um, and we're focusing on the, the remaining um, f a few items that, uh, that still remain. So um, really it was more of giving you a complete assessment of where we're at and um, what is, is still yet to be done. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, with a, with a change in tempo and a change in um, and the, the major operations are now complete, we didn't want people to say, hey, you know, we've seen less uh, trucks, less activity, um, and think that things were, were uh, going away. Uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody was up to, up to speed on where we're at, uh, but knowing that we're going to continue to stay until everything gets complete. We're pretty close. We're, we're hoping to have everything done by the end of May, May uh, uh, 30th, that's right? Did, um, yeah. Did yeah. the Sonoma County Landfill and Beef speak again about the wear miles of debris? So just to reiterate the number, 314 square miles of debris have been removed, and that's a, a math problem based on the total number of properties that have been removed. Uh, the debris has gone to multiple landfills across the uh, four counties, uh, seven to be exact. Sean, how much would you say this has done to the property? A lot of money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what can we ask? Mark, I can. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, uh, based on the, the contracts that have been let, both at the federal and state level, uh, we're somewhere just on the debris, uh, plus or minus 1.3 billion. For well, it's it's hard to put a price tag per parcel. Uh, it's so expensive, largely because of the materials that are being uh, taken away. Right, heavily uh, mercury, asbestos has to be, uh, as they say, burrito wrapped. I'm not an expert on. On, on the hazardous and what has to get done to it. Uh, challenges, obviously, in distance because landfills, the farther you have to truck it, the more cost costly it is, and, and those types of things is why it's so much higher than you would see uh, on a hurricane event that has simply large, largely vegetative debris that can be you know, chopped and, and mulched and therefore not hauled off. Uh, also, lots of tonnage, concrete, and those types of things add cost to to it as well. Uh, has, there, has there ever been a higher price tag on a cleanup? Yeah, I'm sure there has. I, I, I would imagine that 9-11 was a higher price tag. Um, yeah, how about, uh, no, I, not, not off the top of my head. I don't have those figures in front of me. Uh, just to address your, the remaining 1% of properties, uh, complex properties. So there are some properties where the bridges have been burnt out. And so part of the effort to gain access to those parcels means the construction of a temporary bridging asset uh, to come in and then be able to remove the debris. So very, very small numbers, uh, final debris removal in some of those locations. Colonel, you mentioned that over 850 volunteers have been a part of this effort. Correct. Uh, so currently, uh, we have roughly 100 people involved in the mission. Uh, and just to kind of highlight volunteers, from the across the Army Corps of Engineers, we don't have a standing cadre of individuals that deploy regularly to disaster areas. Everybody has a job that they uh, continue to do, whether it's a project manager, they work construction efforts, civil works, military construction, navigation, operations, wide variety of different people have volunteered for this mission. I can answer that. The county um, owns the landfill and it's run through an agreement by Republic Services. Republic Services had expanded the landfill with a, with a sale um, shortly, I think two weeks before the fires. And about 60% of the material, I understand from them, was diverted. 
So in terms of the debris, it was only about 40%. Um, we still have, I talked to the director of the landfill from Republic Services two nights ago, and he said that we have 29 years of airspace still left at that la landfill, 29 years. So just to s halt that myth. <laughs> I don't, but um, I think as the, uh, as the Colonel already said, it went to several other landfills, but ours was the main one. But 29 years is about the best, I think, we can hope for with the landfill. I heard it was about 5%, but because they had expanded the cell um, and had just, ex um, put the cell in literally two weeks before the fires, we had a lot of airspace, and we still do. And the other thing, too, is thanks to the um, Army Corps of Engineers and their contractors, they diverted the majority of that material, which is what it should be. We do not want to put material that um, can be reused in a landfill. Currently right now, part of what the Debris Task Force tracks is, is that portion. So the county right now is in conversations as to what that will look like and what the model will look like and able to uh, properly facilitate the, the essentially the billing portion of it. Uh, but part of the right of entry process involved actually providing uh, some of your insurance documents to the right of entry uh, process. And so um, those debris um, uh, portions that are eligible for debris is what will be used to, to seek the recovery. But there could be other uses that the homeowner could um, use that debris removal for if there's anything else left on the property that wasn't necessarily eligible through the program. So all that will be taken into account as what's being looked at to make sure that residents' um, insurance pays for what's owed and, and doesn't take anything away from them that they would need for their own debris removal. So, yes, we've certainly learned some lessons, uh, you know, on this. One, uh, the, the Corps' uh, contract, the, uh, the ACI contract, that's a pre-bid contract, and it's nationwide in three different areas, has uh, all kinds of uh, labor rates and those types of things in there. The, the existing contract that they had to deal with had nothing in there for fire components. So we had to, right, that's why there were, there were some difficulties in the contracting process because we had to go back and, and negotiate pricing on this type of complex fire removal, asbestos, uh, metals, and all those things. And so we, we've had an act, after action on the federal side with the Corps all the way up to headquarters to, and, and they're recompeting their, their contracts this coming year and that fire component, everything we've learned here is gonna be in that new contract. So the le lesson was learned. Unfortunately, it caused some heartache and delays, uh, but there was measures taken largely on the state side to, to solve for that along with us so we wouldn't have any stoppage of work. So while it was a issue, it was never an issue in getting work done. So it didn't delay getting work done. I can answer that uh, coming from the public assistance side of the house in my f future, my previous life. Uh, so we're continuing to work with uh, not only Santa Rosa, but all the applicants that have uh, public infrastructure damage. Specific to the Santa Rosa water 
We're, we're waiting to get some sampling reports on the levels of benzene, and then we're going to work with them on the scope of work uh, and the federal dollars and state dollars that will be will accompany that work, so they can uh, repair, restore that that uh, that facility or that function. Um, so the public assistance program is certainly one that is is going to be you know probably we'll be here just doing some grants over the next 30, 60, 90 days working with the communities, local, state levels to make sure we get those grants and the funding in place so they can continue with the recovery. What we're doing is, is there are some sites that were uh, over scraped and so we're going through um, and with uh, our the federal partners and the local governments and evaluating um, if that was in fact the case and if it was then uh, we're bringing in uh, we have a, a, a different contractors coming in and placing a, a, a fill base back in there to um, get it to a place where it's ready to be moved forward in the rebuild so um, uh, really, that's been uh, through the assessment a, a handful of properties, but it's across all the different counties that we're looking at just to make sure that we are addressing uh, the commitments that we made. And then, look, this is not a surgical procedure, okay? There's nothing finite about this. This is a massive, very broad scale uh, debris cleanup, and sometimes you're going to get a little over scraping, sometimes you're going to get a little damage. Um, uh, but, you know, when you think about the, the, the size, scope, and, and complexity of this, uh, the amount of debris was removed, um, it really ended up with just a handful. Of, we'll, we'll continue to work with the, the resident and the community to address all of those. Um, the Cal Recycle Program in, in the north, that's Cal Recycle is the state agency that we typically use for debris uh, or response and debris cleanup um, on events that don't typically go to a, f a federal disaster for the most part. Uh, and um, uh, they had uh, the North uh, Butte and Yuba and, and Placer, some of these Northern Cal California counties, uh, they were able to move forward. There was, of course, were smaller operational scopes. Um, they do that all the time. They do a great job and uh, they use their contractors to facilitate those. Those have been completed long ago. Uh, it was important for us to get them to complete those so that we would free them up in the event that we had something else break in the state. We, in fact, did have something else break in the state. We had Ventura County, the Thomas Fire, uh, resulted in over 1,000 structures in Ventura County and then in, um, in Sa Santa Barbara. Uh, and we were able to re-divert those cow recycle resources down there and begin their operation. And, and that operation is also close to about, I would say, 95%, 96% complete. Uh, again, all in this time frame, very compressed statewide, what we would consider three catastrophic events, um, the Thomas Fire in Ventura, the Santa Barbara mudslides, and the fires up north, balancing all three of these with all these resources to meet metrics that were really unprecedented set of metrics, um, uh, get those done while still taking into account all the impacts to the community. You're welcome. Okay. I'll take one last question, if there is one. Seeing none, thank you everybody for coming and we appreciate it.